Okay, let's start the class. Introduction to Ewar, specifically Tech One frigates. Please, everybody, open a trade window with Harold Magnuson and GE Keepstar. I will be handing out your first ship, which is the Griffin. Uh, sorry, FC. I just bought for myself um, a ship, the, the Maulus. Not a problem. Take it away. Yeah? Do you have a Griffin already? If not, I'll give you one. Uh, no, Griffin, I have the Vigil, I think. Okay, trade Harold Magnuson for a Griffin. This will be a practical demonstration. You guys can all fly the ships and see what they do. Okay, thanks, FC. Thank you very much. Okay, everybody jump into your Griffin. Now, Griffins are the Caldari frigate, and they use what's called ECM, or Electronic Countermeasures. If you hit Alt-F or open up your fittings window, when you have the ship in it, you can see the currently equipped fit. Every frigate should always have, as a starting point, a 5MN micro warp drive, because you've got to be able to move fast around the milsec. The particular module in question for Ewar is in your mid-slots, and there, notice there are different colored ones in your cargo hold. ECM has four flavors, or varieties. Each kind of sensor strength depends on a different, for the corresponding weakness on certain ship types. Now if you expand the information on the right-hand side of your ship, if you look under targeting, your ship will have every Kaldari ship will have a gravimetric sensor strength natively, adjusted by skills and modules. So if you hover over it, it'll tell you larger values reduce the chance of being jammed by ECM and assist in avoiding detection by probes. So that's your sensor strength. Mine is 17 points in my Griffin right here. If you hover your mouse over the gravimetric ECM-1 equipped to your ship, you'll see it has 5.8 Gravimetric ECM jammer strength, that may vary by skills, and 1.9 of the other three types, because it's a specialized ECM, which means it is much, much more effective against Kaldari ships than a couple others. Now, some people make the mistake on the starter fit is like this of doing a rainbow, of doing one of each ECM, but that leaves you weak. It's much better to refit depending on the ship you're fighting of all the same flavor or all color type. That's why all of your ships have the three refits in the cargo hold for different colors for different ship types. So on this particular Griffin, I've got 5.8 times three. That's 17.4 points. Now the way that works is you compare the jam strength versus the sensor strength of the target. If I was to jam Another ship that was the same fit that has 17 sensor strength points. If I've got 17.2, I have a greater amount of jam strength than sensor strength that's a guaranteed jam. If there's less, then that ratio is the percentage chance of a successful jam. So what is a jam? A jam will break all other target locks on your opponent's ship other than you. So if you jam a ship, they cannot target anything else except the part of the ship that is jamming them. This is incredibly useful for fights, especially against enemy logistic ships. Because if they can't target their friendly ships, they cannot apply remote reps, and they're completely useless. These particular fits also have rigs on them. These are small particle dispersion projectors. They increase the optimal range of your ECM modules. If you hover your mouse over it, you should get an optimal range and a range within for each ECM module. The way that works is with an optimal range, you will have the full strength sensor effectiveness, sensor jam effectiveness. However, after that, but before you get to the end of your range, you will have reduced effectiveness. Beyond your range, you have no effectiveness. So for example, mine has 54 optimal and 89 kilometers range. So a target 90 kilometers plus 
would not be, I would have no effect on them for GMs. Let's have everybody undocking your griffins. I have a little practice jamming each other. Take the sleep warp, we'll go to a nearby structure on grid at 100 or 50. The reason we're not going at zero is because if you're tethered, you can't target someone. You have to break tether. So we're off tether for targeting and flight practice. For starters, let's have you guys anchor up on me, that's Harold Madison. Add me to your watch list by right clicking on my name and fleet, and then keep it range one kilometer prop mods off. This is the standard form up for any kind of fleet, the FC will tell you to anchor up on him so you follow the ship around in space. You're all moving, very good. So now go ahead and target all of your other fleet members, including myself. You can control left click, drag a box around your ships in space, or you can control left click each one individually, or a radio menu, or right click, however you want to do it. Okay, Mordecai Stang, you're going to be the first jam target. Everyone activate your Graphometric ECM jams on Mordecai. Not me, Mordecai. Some of you are jamming Harold Madison. I want you to jam Mordecai. But as an effect for our viewers in the future, you can see I've lost all targets except for the person who's jamming me. So Mordecai, do you see all of your targets disappear? Yeah. Well, yeah, I only had one up. Well, and it's gone now. Okay, stop jamming him. So when you activated the modules, you should have noticed there was a little icon underneath your target. If it's kind of grayed out, that means the jam was unsuccessful. But if it's really bright, full color, that means the jam landed and was successful. Okay, everybody target Harold Magnuson now. Target your FC. Broadcast myself as a target. Now jam me. Everybody activate your jams. Yep, I am now thoroughly jammed. And if I try to target the nearby right target, I am completely unable to. Now I am able to still target Kalik because Kalik is the one currently with an active jam cycle against me. So in a fleet fight, if you were to jam an enemy DPS ship, they would still be able to shoot you in the Griffin. So you have to be aware of that. Okay, stop jamming me, cycle down. Now depending on the fit, cap stability can be a major issue. There are also skills and fittings for that. E-War e does take a certain amount of capacitor. These particular fits should be cap stable for pretty much everybody. So please prop mod on, activate your micro warp drive, stay anchored. There's the amusing thing, I was jamming you with a gold jam, not a blue. Yes, it is still possible to get jams with the non, the wrong color type, depending on ship. It's just a lower percentage possibility. Everybody jam Herald again. Target the RFC. Keep all your jams running. Keep them all cycling. Because this ship has a cap battery in the medium slot and only three jams, it should be cap stable for everybody. 
So this is useful in fleet fights for not having to worry about your capacitor. You can just turn on your micro warp drive to anchor on the FC and just run your jams as much as you want to. Okay, uh, confirm that because the dock fit that I'm running has four jams to it. It will depend on the fit and your skills whether or not your cap stable. Yeah. You can vary the jams or the micro warp drive to the meta for the reduced capacitor need and train up your skills. Prop mods off. Stop jamming your FC. Now all of your ships should have one Hornet EC300 drone in your drone bay. Go ahead and launch your drones now. This is the Ewar drone. It does not deal any damage at all, but it has one point of jam strength to it. So keep Herald targeted and assign your drones to engage your EC300 drones. Just press F like you would a damage drone and your jam drones will begin trying to jam me. I haven't trained my drones yet, so I'll just listen in to this fight. Okay, yep, there's two drones on me. They've both failed. By themselves, one drone has a very low chance of doing anything, but in swarms, they become very effective because the individual jam strength from all sources will add up on a target. So if there were, say, 10 Griffins, and they each launched one ECM drone, and they all put the same drone, on, the drones on the same target, that would be 10 points of jam cycling each time. Total. Much higher chance of jamming somebody. So now I've got three drones on me, still no successful jam attempts. Because I've got a 17 point sensor strength, so three points is probably not going to break it. Oh, there it goes. One of them was defeated. Or was that a griffin? Okay, recall your drones. Now you can also overheat your EVO or ECM modules. That'll give you a bonus to the strength. Everybody pre-overheat your ECM modules. You can shift left click, or you can click on the little green part at the very top of the module to turn on overload. Go ahead and target the Herald and put overloaded jams on me. Activate your heated jams. You don't want to overheat for too long because of course heat damage will build up on any overheated module and you risk burning out all of your mid slots. But it's very useful if you need that one jam, especially in a frigate. You can easily warp in and out of fights. So you land, get one heated jam off, warp out. Okay, stop jamming me. Turn off your modules. Don't overheat too much. You'll notice the cycle time is significant for your UR modules. That's because jams last for 20 seconds. Which means if you land a successful jam on a target, they are completely unable to target anything else besides your ship for the next 20 seconds. FC, can I ask you a question? Please do. When uh, we need to target someone and we have three or four modules, do you suggest that to use all of them in only one target? Yes, you always use as many EWAR modules as you can on one target, at least for ECM because you want to increase your successful jam attempt chance. OK, thanks. There may be cases where you want to spread them out if there's a lot of other ECM ships. But in general, it's much more important to get the jam on the one target. Because you know theoretically, you might get three jams on three targets, but that's only a much lower chance for each one. Something for higher skilled players with tech two ships might try, because they have much higher strength for each jam. Most ships will have between 15 and 20 points of sensor strength, 
So you always want to use all the gems you have on a Griffin. Any questions on Griffins and ECM? There is no way to reduce uh, once you unlock a target uh, the time uh, that the module will uh, reload. There is no way, right? No. Okay. Although if you warp off before the cycle finishes, the jam will disappear. Oh, okay. Okay, perfect. Okay, everybody take this work back to the Keep Star. And dock up. Now the colors of the ECM modules correspond to their primary racial types. Gravimetric being blue is prime is called Ari. Ladar, which is red, is for Minimitar ships. Radar, which is yellow, is for Amar ships. And magnetometric, which is green, is for Galenta ships. There are also pirate faction ships, and they, but they will all fall under one of the four. You can just check the information panel for each one to find out which one is it is. Their attributes. There are any differences between, apart from the color? No. Nope. Okay. It all depends on what you're trying to jam. If you're trying to use yellow jams, which is Amar, versus an Aminuitar ship, you're going to have a bad time. It's going to be way less effective. You should always ah, so refit to the right color to match your target. Oh, so you need to equip the right module against the right... Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, we are now going to move on to... What do I have fitted up here? Vigils, target painting. Trade Harold Magnuson in the Keepstar if you would like a vigil. I'm not sure if I'm trained for the vigil. Would I be able to pilot that? Trade me and find out. I'll give you one anyway. All right. They're all minimum fit, just tech one stuff. Basic skills should have it. If not, you'll find out soon. Huh. It's actually one ship I don't have in my hangar. Thank you. You want one? I'll give you one. These things are cheap. For point of reference, guys, these Tech One fits, I built them myself. They cost about one and a half million isk each. These are very cost effective, highly, very useful for bringing on fleets. Uh, basically, uh, in every fleet, uh, there are ships like the one that we are using right now, or usually there are more expensive and powerful ships for ACM. Yeah, there are all kinds of expensive Tech 2 options you can fly. Okay. But the Griffin can be just as effective against one target sometimes. Oh, okay, okay. It's just a lot easier to get blown up. Okay, guys, hop into your vigils and open up the fitting window. You'll notice it's very similar to the previous fit. It's got a 5 min micro warp drive, a small cat battery for capacitor stability, it's got a damage control for a little bit of tank. And the low slot also has a signal amplifier, which increases your targeting range, targeting speed, and sensor strength. It's very useful for E-War frigates. Now this fit has two different things. It's got a sensor booster and two target painter ones. Now the reason that the sensor booster is on there is because target painters have very long range. You can load the sensor booster with the targeting range script in your cargo hold. You just drag and drop it. And it'll give you a major boost to your targeting range. 
So target painters, what do they do? They increase the signature radius of its target. If you hover over it, you'll see I get it with my skills, 31% signature radius modifier. What's the signature radius and why do you want to magnify it? The signature radius of every ship in the game is unique to it depending on the ship type and fittings and skills. It determines how big the ship is in other people's targeting. How easy it is to hit, basically, with guns and missiles. So if you look on the right-hand side under the targeting of your ship putting window, underneath where the sensor strength is, which now you'll notice it has the little red dot for later sensor strength, you'll see the signature radius, and it'll have a value of minus 34 meters. Having a smaller signature radius means you are much harder to hit. You take longer for enemies to lock you up, and you are harder to scan down by combat probes. So it's very common for the FC, for L fleets to have a Vigil or two, or the bigger Tech 2 variant, the Rapier. Or the Hugin, I'm sorry, the Hugin. It's off from the target painting ship. Visuals are also used all the time. And they follow the FC's primary broadcasts for damage. You lock it up as soon as you can, and you apply your target painters to it. This will bloom and increase the target signature radius significantly, making it a lot easier for our fleet's turrets to track it, lock on, and deal damage. Okay, everybody, undock in your vigil. Make sure you have your um, targeting range script loaded into your sensor booster. Take the orb. Now, a useful trip, trick, tip for when you're in a fleet, whenever you land from warp. The first thing you almost always want to do is anchor on your FC. The easiest way to do that is to have them on your watch list. And then as you are landing from warp, even before you're finished arriving at the destination, hold your left mouse button over their name in the fleet window. And you can bring up the radio menu. And you can hover your mouse over the 4 o'clock position for keep it range. It should be 1 kilometer. It'll be grayed out when you're in a warp, but as soon as you land, you can just let go of your mouse button and you'll immediately start keeping it range. So we're going to practice that and we're going to take another fleet warp here. And I want you guys to all do the left click hold radio menu trick to immediately keep it range as soon as we land on me. Take the work. So hold down your left mouse button on my name in your watch list and immediately keep it range one kilometer by letting go as soon as it's available. Once you're anchoring prop mods on, As you can see, I've got a 20 kilometer lead on the first vigil to kept it range. I've got a 50 kilometer lead on Signy, and Kalik hasn't even anchored up yet. It doesn't seem to be working for me. So I just do my old school way of right click and go over to the list. Yep, that always works. Right click is always your fallback. But you always want to be anchoring up as soon as you can, because the FC will be running his prop mod, and he'll be pulling range pretty quickly. These fits are also cap stable. You can just leave your prop mod on and not worry about it. Okay, go ahead and open up your fitting window while you're in space. You can hit Alt-F on your keyboard for the shortcut. 
Now these numbers on the right hand side are live. So you can see your targeting range is probably about 97 kilometers, give or take. Now if you activate your sensor booster with the targeting range script loaded into it, go ahead and do that now. It should give you a major boost to your targeting range. I've now got 142 kilometers maximum targeting range. Now if you don't want to open up that giant fitting window, you can go ahead and close it. And if you have your tactical overlay on, which everybody should, it's Control D shortcut, or it's also the little icon just to the left of your HUD. One of the little circle buttons over there, tactical overlay. You'll see a dotted red line perimeter at your maximum targeting range. So if you turn off your sensor booster, you'll see it shrink back down to under 100. Now the reason you might want to do that is because target painters have an extreme range. If you hover your mouse over your fitted target painter modules, you'll see I'm getting optimal range 80 kilometers and a total range within 177 kilometers. That is outside the normal targeting range of my ship. But if I run in the sensor booster, with the targeting range script loaded, now I can go out to 140 kilometers. Vigils are one of the ships that can apply EWAR at maximum range. They do still have reduced effectiveness, but they can hit out a lot farther than, say, the ECM can. Vigils will in most cases be anchored with the rest of the fleet, so you'll probably be within optimal most of the time. Sensor boosters aren't always necessary. But if you want to fly independently, you can be at extreme range and in relative safety from the enemy fleet. Okay, let's have the fleet target your FC, lock up Harold Magnuson. So if you've got your fitting windows open, you'll notice that your signature radius is now much bigger than it was before. That's because your micro warp drive is running. Micro warp drives have a significant bloom to your own ship's signature radius, which makes you a lot easier to target and to hit. Yeah, some of you are already target painting me. Go ahead and everybody, everybody target paint me. My signature radius keeps going up. I'm now almost double the signature radius I had before from all the target painters. I've got five painters on me. That's pretty much the maximum effectiveness. Every additional target painter has reduced effectiveness. So more than five doesn't really change anything. And more than three will have significantly reduced effectiveness. This particular fitting has two target painters, because if you're the only vigil, you want to apply, you'll still get a full benefit, almost full benefit from having two. Even if there are multiple vigils, everybody wants, you should always put all of your target painters on whatever is being called primary at the time. You want to boom and synergy radius as much as you possibly can. Signe is burning away. Signe, make sure you're anchored up on Harold Magnuson. Keep it range one kilometer. Or click on my name from the watch list. If you've got your graphics turned on, you can see the little red lasers in space. Target painters are basically laser pointers. Any questions on target painters or vigils? Uh one easy one, FC. Um, when in a fleet, when someone is using this target painter, because I never see it. 
the Jules will be using target painters on the enemy fleet, following the enemy's the UFC's broadcasts. So let's say I broadcast Surma as the primary. Everybody lock him up from your fleet broadcast history window. And put target painters on him. That's the procedure you'd follow for the FC's broad DPS primary broadcasts. Okay. Whatever the fleet is shooting, you want to be target painting. The FC might say, stop shooting Surma, stop shooting Surma, unlock Surma. And then it'll broadcast a new target. Lock up Signy. Shoot Signy. That's keyword for you, target pain Signy. Couple tricks for managing modules just in general. You'll see your target painter icons underneath your targeted ship if you're running them. You can click on those icons to deactivate the specific module it's coming from. So if you want to decycle one of your paints from one of your targets, you can just click on the little icon underneath the selected target. It helps you manage and juggle multiple targets and multiple target painters. If you're not sure which module is affecting which ship. You can also control shift left click on any selected target to unlock that target. Okay, prop mod is off. Unlock all targets. This particular fit just has one DPS drawn in it, a warrior one. Basically a horde drone. The target painter will get you on kill mails, but you can throw out a little more DPS just to follow broadcasts if it's a close. You could always put a Hornet EZ300 in there as well, but it's not as effective for a vigil because you're going after DPS broadcasts. Not as important. You can just put on whatever you want. Just pick a random enemy, assign your drone to it. Okay, Keepstar is broadcast to line 2 or line back Keepstar. Take the warp, duck up. Uh, FC, in every fleet uh, there is someone that is doing this job, so I'm talking about um, electronic war. Ideally, yes. Okay. Anybody can bring a Tech 1 frigate to any Brave fleet at any time. Feel free to just grab one and jump in. Doesn't matter what the regular comp is. We can always use Tech 1 E-War frigates. Okay, go ahead and trade Herald for your Mollus. I have already won, so no, no, no worries, uh, FC. Thank you. Anybody else need one? Clicks in his already. All right, cool. If you open up your fitting window, once you're in your, the ship, you'll see it's almost identical to the other EWAR ships, just changing out the mid-slot EWAR modules. Micro warp drive for speed, cap battery for stability, damage control, signal amplifier, an overdrive injector on the mollusk that has three low slots and it's go even faster. 
and some particle dispersion projectors to increase the optimal range of your ECM modules. So the MOLUS uses remote sensor dampeners. Unlike ECM, which is a hard break for all of your targets, for the affected ship's targets, a damp is a reduction in targeting for the affected ship. The modules by themselves will both affect target scan resolution and target maximum targeting range, but they can be scripted. In your cargo hold, you'll find two scripts of each, the scan resolution dampening script and the targeting range dampening script. This will put your modules all the way towards affecting one or the other. You should pretty much always be using scripts in your dampeners. Much better to have maximum effectiveness on one attribute. So go ahead and load your scan resolution scripts. Use drag and drop from your cargo into the fitting window. If you hover your mouse over the module, you'll see that it now only affects scan resolution. And you have something like negative 38% scan resolution bonus. No, it says bonus, it's a negative number, which means you're reducing your target ship's scan resolution. Scan resolution refers to how quickly you can target ships. Frigates tend to have very good scan resolution. If you look over on the right hand side of your fitting window under targeting, to the right of your sensor strength, which is now green, magnetometric frigolente, the little radar dish will show you a measure in scan resolution in millimeters. I've got 698. So when you're using a MOLUS, it will reduce the target ship's scan resolution by the 30% or so. This is particularly useful for enemy shooting enemy logistics whip, because if you reduce the enemy logis time, it takes them longer to lock up their own shield broadcasts, which gives our DPS more time to kill the target ship. Uh, FC, a question is about that. Uh, so basically, once uh, we are using the um, scan resolution um, against uh, um, a target, they basically um, get slower to um, target not only the enemies, but only the allies, right? Yes, it affects okay. their targeting for any ship. Okay. Let's go ahead and undock, get some practice with it. Three warps here in a second. Okay, anchor up on Herald, keep it range one kilometer, prop mods on. It's good practice for muscle memory for knowing what to click, because that's basically what the FC is going to say every time. You want to get your ship moving by anchoring on the FC, keep it range one kilometer, and then turn on your micro drive. These particular fits are also cap stable, which gives you one less thing to worry about. Okay, so my base scan resolution in the ship is 698. Now everybody to please target Harold Magnuson and put one scripted scan resolution dampener on me. I've now got three damps on me and I'm down to 236, so a quarter of what I had before. A third. Now the nice thing about damps as compared to ECM is damps will always uh, land effectively. Same thing for target painters. Target painters will always hit as long as you're within the maximum range. 
So as long as you're within the range of the module, it will have some effect on the target ship, unlike ECM, which is percent chance based to be effective or not effective at all. Dams also have optimal range and max range. So with my skills, I've got an optimal range of 51 kilometers with this fit and a total range within 116. Okay, decycle your scripted scan resolution dampeners. So you use scan res scripts against enemy logistic ships. Because they're all going to be sitting next to each other, their targeting range isn't as important. It's more about how quickly they can lock up their allies. Now against enemy DPS ships, you would use targeting range. So everybody reload to targeting range scripts. You can right click on your module to select from the ammo choice just like a gun. I don't have a choice. Do you have the scripts in your cargo? Oh, if you only have the one script, they will only give you the one choice. Evidently. Okay, everybody this... please put one targeting damp on Harold Magnuson. Yeah, I had this thing out in combat uh, with the fleets not that long ago, and we were all using the range scripts, not the scan res scripts. So my targeting range went from 96 kilometers down to 42. And it's about to go lower. Now I'm down to 25. With four damps. So that's huge. 96 to 25 kilometers is crippling for basically every ship in any fight ever. Unless you're sitting at zero on somebody. So I guess it stacks until it's very, very low. Is there like a minimum? I believe the effectiveness rating goes first module 100%, second module 86%, third module 50%, fourth module 25, maybe 30%, and fifth module is like 10 or 8%. So more than five is basically zero. Okay. So damps do stack, but they have reduced effectiveness for each additional one. So you'd be using a targeting range scripted dampener if our fleet is at distance, the enemy fleet. If we're fighting each other over long distances, then you target an enemy DPS ship and you put targeting range damp on them. In this case, only one. For the, for the mollusk, you'd put one damp on one ship because it's pretty effective for each one. Or you could do two. It's really not that big a deal. That way the enemy ship can no longer target out to his normal targeting range, rendering him completely unable to fire if our fleet is farther away, too far away from them. So damps can be very useful. Not just against DPS, but uh, our recon ships. Ooh, damps on recons are nasty. Because the enemy Hugans can normally like target and web out to like 80 kilometers. If you throw two damps on a Hugan, suddenly you can only target to 40 kilometers, and he becomes worthless. So you can single-handedly negate a 500 millionist ship's effectiveness in combat with your 2 millionist ship. Any questions on the mollusks or damps? Well, it's quite clear. Thank you. All right, cool. Prop mods off. Align keep star. So the Mollus actually has a decent drone bay. You can carry six light drones and deploy four at once. I'd recommend just putting Hornet Easy 300s in there. Because you can just fire and forget those on some enemy, random enemy ship. Hopefully they jam them. Question? Oh, no. You said three Hornets? Hornet Easy right? 300s. 
Ok. ECM drones are always a great idea. Doesn't matter what ship you're in. Because with the drones, if the drone lands a jam on the target ship, they can only target the drone. They can't target the ship that launched the drone. Which is very useful for these very fragile frigates. Everybody duck up. And a few more minutes while I fit up some crucifiers for you guys. That's the MR electronic warfare frigate with weapon damps or weapon disruptors. Okay, now you can trade a herald for your crucifiers. Okay, everybody jump into your crucifier. I'll follow along in my griffin and not train on the crucifier. Should be a short train. So the basic fit is the same. You open up your fitting window. You'll see the MR EWAR module is a tracking disruptor, also known as a weapon disruptor. This will reduce your target ship's turret fall off, turret optimal range, and turret tracking speed. This is effective the same way damps are, but instead of affecting targeting range and speed, they affect turret tracking and targeting and, and damage fall off. So all guns have an optimal and a fall off range for damage. If a target is within optimal, it will apply full damage. The target is within your falloff range, you will deal up to half damage. And if a target is beyond your falloff range, you'll deal less than half damage. It's falling off very quickly. So what the crucifiers can do is you can load them with either tracking speed or optimal range scripts. And that'll focus your effect just like the mollus would. So go ahead and load optimal range tracking disruption scripts. And you'll see something like 37% reduction for fall off and optimal range when you hover over the module. This is a very sneaky way of handicapping an enemy DPS ship. Because you'll still be able to target the ship if they're not being damped or jammed. But if they're being weapon disrupted, their guns will just be a lot weaker at range. Whereas, for example, they could normally hit out to 100 kilometers reliably. If you hit them with even one tracking disruptor, suddenly they can only hit out to 70 kilometers reliably. If you put two on there, it's probably like 50 or something. It's really effective, especially against long range comps, where their optimal range and their fall off range is their entire, their entire fleet basis. This is why crucifiers are the number one called for EWAR ship on fleets after vigils. Because 99% of the time we're fighting turret based compositions. And reducing their optimal range or their tracking speed is actually huge. Because if you disrupt the enemy DPS ship, which is, say, a Munin, 600 mil, 500 mil ship, you can render him unable to apply damage to only a fraction of what he would normally at range in your 2 million esque ship. Or alternatively, you can put the tracking speed scripts in. Everybody reload your tracking speed scripts. We have to unfit the targeting range ones first. You'll get something like 37% tracking speed debuff. That's also huge. Because if our fleet is orbiting the enemy fleet at close range, it's already hard for their turrets to track quickly enough across space to keep track on us and to deal with damage properly. But if you hit them with tracking speed disruptors, becomes a lot harder for them to track us. Lots of ships will sometimes fit 
tracking computers to improve their ship's tracking because it's pretty poor as it is. So one crucifier tracking disruptor can completely negate their entire ship setup for tracking. And they have pretty terrible turret tracking. This would be used for when we're close range on a, sh on a fleet, moving at speed. Okay, everybody undock. Get a little practice. Oh, let me actually put a turret on the ship so I can show the viewers the effects of it. And give you guys numbers. Just stay undocked. Now the Crucifier has an even nicer drone bay than the Mollus. You can carry nine light drones. The pits I give you are full of Hornet EC-300s. Take warp. Anchor up on land, keep it range one kilometer, prop mods on. Or you're not moving. Click, you're not moving. I was trying that uh, left click hold thing again, and it still doesn't seem to be working for me, or else I misunderstood it from the get go. Are you not getting the radio menu when you hold left click on my name in the fleet watch list window? I, I get the, uh, le the radio menu, but. It just doesn't seem to want to activate from there. You have to wait until it highlights. It'll be grayed out because you're in warp. But as soon as you're out of warp and the FC starts moving, it'll become full color. Then you move your mouse over it and let go. Yeah, I don't know, mate. <laughs> it's one of them things, right? Okay, I've got a little light blaster here, which would be good numbers. For tracking, for example, everybody make sure you have tracking scripts loaded on your weapon disruptors. Lock up Herald, your FC. You're going to begin applying weapon disruptors with tracking scripts. Apply them to you? Yep. Okay, I've got four weapon disruptors on me, and I went from 500 turret tracking to 115. So that's a, down to 20% of what I would normally have. You probably wouldn't be coordinating disruptors on a fleet. You'd all be trying to disrupt individual targets. But even so, that's a huge reduction. Okay, stop disrupting me. Reload to your optimal range disruption scripts. Please stop disrupting FC for a minute. Serma. So disruptors like damps and target painters have guaranteed application within range, depending on optimal or total range. So if you're within your optimal, and the fits I gave you have rigs to increase that. This is lagging this... very well. I'm sorry. So weapon disruptors have very good range. Even these cheap Tech 1 fits, I'm able to get optimal range to 95 kilometers in total within 121. That's probably the longest range, second only to the Target Painter. Number one actually for optimal. So 
So these things can apply full strength within 95 kilometers, give or take. That's very good optimal range. Okay, so starting off, my little blaster has 1500 meters optimal and 4K fall off. Go ahead and apply your optimal range tracking disruptors on me. Now I'm way down to 358 meters optimal and only 900 meters fall off. Down to a quarter about. It's a really big reduction in application, especially over longer range. Ships that are designed to shoot out to 100 kilometers when they're being tracking disrupted with optimal range, even though they can still target, they think they're fine. But if they're disrupted, even though the weapons will cycle, the damage application will be significantly reduced because they no longer have optimal to where they think they do. And they'll be applying to, you know, down to half or even less damage if they're in fall off. That's why crucifiers are really good in fleet fights because they significantly reduce the incoming enemy DPS at range. And they reduce their ability to hit by tracking at close range. In a fleet fight, you'd pick an enemy DPS ship that's turret based, like a Munin or a Ferox. You'd apply one disruptor for each ship, or two, either one's fine. You would not be targeting the primary like you would in a vigil. Vigils would be following FC primaries. But dampeners, ECM, and weapon disruptors would be flying independently. You'd be picking your own targets. There's no point in applying EWAR to a ship that's about to die because you're going to kill it. And sorry, of see, what's the... Um... The idea, the idea behind it, I mean, which target I should uh, targeting? Mainline enemy DPS ships. So we often fight against Munins, for example. So you would pick an enemy Munin, because they use turrets, and you would apply your turret disruption, weapon disruptor module on it. That would significantly reduce their application with turrets at range, or their ability to track targets at close range which either way reduces the amount of damage they can apply to us. Sometimes we get lucky and an FC will call secondary and tertiary targets as well. That might be a good thing there, right? Okay. No, you don't really want to ECO E-War anything that the FC broadcasts. You want to E-War what's left. You want to E-War what we're not shooting at. Okay. I was just going from the surmise that the FC was uh, calling out possibly targets close enough to where you would kind of want their range stamped down too. Or is nope. that thinking just wrong? Nope. Uh, if anything, you'd pick targets that are far away from you. Because you're most effective if they're already at range and you put an optimal range disruption weapon disruptor on them they would be unable to shoot our fleet. Whereas if they're already close, range disruption wouldn't be as effective. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Also, the and FC guess... will, never, will never manage your, your, it's your responsibility to manage your. Pick your own targets. What's up? And I guess you wouldn't target a missile-based DPS ship. No, and that brings me to the final point. There is another module for the Crucifier. It's a missile disruptor. These are turret disruptors. There's a different module you can refit that affects missiles. Let me look it for you in fleet chat here. Oh, okay. They're called guidance disruptors. They fall into the same skills as the weapon disruptors, tra tracking disruptors. And they affect missile explosion velocity and explosion radius. Which those are missile mechanics 
same application for tracking and range his turrets. Nice. So they also have scripts. You can reduce the missile range, which will really cut their distance that they can apply out to. Missiles that are fired at targets that are two that are beyond their range will just disappear before they hit the target and deal no damage. Even if the ship can lock it. And the precision disruption scripts reduce their ability to apply to targets. That comes into signature radius. Missiles have a certain explosion radius. And trying to shoot a ship with a smaller with a smaller signature radius than your missile's rated explosion radius will deal less than optimal damage. So for example, if you're shooting a heavy missile at a frigate, it's going to deal less damage than if you were shooting a cruiser. Because heavy missiles have a larger explosion velocity and explosion radius. And frigates have smaller signature radiuses than those missiles. So that makes them harder to apply to small ships. Less frequently used, but still good to have refits available for. Because we might go against a missile fleet, like a Cerberus fleet. The range disruption scripts would be huge, because Cerberuses are most of the time fit for range. That's one of their primary advantages, their huge range. But if you've got some crucifiers and they've got guidance disruptors with missile range scripts, suddenly every ship that's being guidance disrupted can only hit out to a fraction of what it could before. And their comp is ineffective at kiting like they normally would be. Questions on the crucifier? Um, how do you reach that speed? 3,500 meters per second. So I'm using a 5MN micro warp drive just to tech one. And the ship also has an overdrive injector system module in the low slot. Oh, overdrive, okay. With the link in fleet chat, it significantly increases your velocity at the cost of cargo space, which for a frigate is irrelevant for e war frigates. Can be useful if you're flying solo or if you're orbiting the FC instead of keeping a range. If our fleet gets into a close range engagement with the enemy, you might want to fly your own ship by orbiting at range. One example would be to orbit the FC at, say, 20 or 30 kilometers. That would give you a higher transversal from the enemy fleet. You'd be orbiting kind of around them as well. So let's try that. Everybody switch your anchor from keep at range to orbit 30 kilometers. Problem mod's running. When your fit is cap stable, like the ones I gave you guys, you can just leave the prop mod on, and not worry about it, while also using your EWAR modules. And that gives you speed to pull distance and to maintain transversal against enemy ships. You can even orbit the enemy, although it's kind of riskier, because they might just drop drones and blap you. Okay, that covers all the basics for the four different EWAR ships and their uses. Comments, questions, concerns? Do you have a personal favorite among the ships, ships that you've demoed? I love flying the Griffin because I get to cackle like an evil genius when you pull off a jam because the enemy ship just can't do anything at all. And if you jam the enemy Logi, that's huge, because that means possibly you break their ability to save ships. You can turn an entire fight by successfully jamming a Lodgy ship, because they lose reps on that one ship that we managed to kill. Then we kill another, then we kill another, and it could be the tipping point. So Griffin's my personal favorite for that. 
cool. And it's just super annoying. If you've ever been jammed by enemy ECM, you, you know the pain. Take my word for it. Getting jammed is the best, the worst thing you can do to inflict on your enemies. So they just have to sit there, and they can't, they can't target, they can't do anything. They will try to shoot you, though. Because you are still allows the target to target you back, griffins die very quickly, very often. So it takes some manual piloting skill to keep them alive, and warping in and out constantly. You don't want to sit there and get shot at by enemy light drones. If you get aggressed by a swarm of flight drones, you just need to warp out and then warp back. Bouncing in and out to break target locks. Everybody stop dampening me. Or stop disrupting me. Second favorite is the vigil. Because one vigil versus no vigils is actually a huge difference in fleet damage application. Where we might not be able to follow a target with only one vigil, if we have three vigils and they're all target painting, then we successfully follow the target and we get more kills. Those can also swing fights by having enough target painters available. Alright, that concludes the lesson. Please feel free to keep your ships and bring them on the next fleet. Thank you all for coming out.